Hey, welcome back to my channel, and if you're new here, then welcome. My name is Maddie, and today I will be sharing the books that I read in March. I'm trying to make my background a little more interesting. That's why I have a lot of random plushes over here, just to have something in the background, because I love having backgrounds that just aren't a couch like this or a window, so we're going to stick to this for now. I read six books in March, which is pretty good. That's better than I did in February where I only read four books, so six is great. I'm excited to share all these books with y'all, so let's just get right into it. First book I read in March, and honestly, I'm trying to think of any book that has topped this one, but I want to say this is my favorite book of the year so far, and that is Reminders of Him by Colleen Hoover. Finally got around to reading this book. I think I put it on two other TBRs and just didn't get to it, but I finally got to it in March and I am so glad that I did because this book was so incredible. At this point after reading this book, I don't know why only after reading this book I had this thought, but what I thought about is that Colleen Hoover really is, this is a big statement, but she is the best writer of our generation. I'm not even kidding because at this point I've read so many books by her that have just gotten easy five stars for me, have all been incredible, have all like very emotionally impacted me. At this point, I just think she's like the, one of the greatest writers ever. I'm gonna put it out there. She's in my top three favorite authors of all time for sure. She may even be number one because this one just like solidified that for me. I just tried to explain the synopsis to this, but I'm having a hard time explaining it without giving away spoilers. So I think I'm just gonna read the back just so that I don't accidentally spoil anyone because the back synopsis shouldn't have any spoilers. So let's do that. It says, after serving five years in prison for a tragic mistake, Kina Rowan returns to the town where it all went wrong, hoping to reunite with her four-year-old daughter. But the bridges Kina burned are proving impossible to rebuild. Everyone in her daughter's life is determined to shut Kina out, no matter how hard she works to prove herself. The only person who hasn't closed the door on her completely is Ledger Ward, a local bar owner, and one of the few remaining links to Kina's daughter. But if anyone were to discover how Ledger is slowly becoming an important part of Kina's life, both would risk losing the trust of everyone important to them. The two form a connection despite the pressure surrounding them, but as their romance grows, so does the risk. Kina must find a way to absolve the mistakes of her past in order to build a future out of hope and healing. So this book deals heavily on the theme of forgiveness and how forgiveness is so important and how sometimes you do need to give someone a second chance when the situation calls for it. The biggest reason this book really hit me hard is because of the fact that Kina has lost her daughter. She has lost custody of her daughter. She's not allowed to see her. Uh, I won't say why because spoilers, but for a reason she's not allowed to see her daughter. And it was really hard reading from her point of view because you can just feel the sorrow she has of not being able to be with her daughter. And the reason that spoke to me, it's not that I have a child, but in recent years, like I want to say the past three years, I have thought about how I would feel as a mother and if I were to be a mother how much I would just love my children. So because I know I'd have that much love for my child, if my child was ever taken away from me or died, it would absolutely destroy me. It is one of my biggest fears and that's kind of the reason why I am scared to potentially have children someday because I know that I'd grow such an attachment that would be hard if anything bad happened to them. So that's the reason why Kina's just despair over having lost her daughter spoke to me so much and really made me super, super emotional. Even though I'm not even a mother, at least as of yet, I still was able to connect with her feelings towards the fact that she has lost her daughter and it just feels just wrecked over it. Like I said, I love the theme of forgiveness in this book. And I love how this book brought out that sometimes a person can just have a bad lapse of judgment for one moment, but that doesn't mean that they're a horrible person. They just had a bad moment, one where they did not make a, the right decision, they made a mistake, but that does not mean that they're an evil person, they just had a very bad lapse of judgment. And that's something that Kina goes through, and everyone around her really judges her for what she did, but this was just a bad moment for her. She has never done anything else wrong in all her life. She just had this really bad moment where she made a really bad mistake, but she proves herself and proves that that moment does not define her. So for that reason, everyone should just let it go 
and just, you know, be willing to forgive her. And that's something she really deserved. And I love the love interest who is Ledger because he starts to really see that. At first, he actually hates Kina because of this thing that she did. But as he starts to get to know her more outside of this, you know, mistake she's made, which everyone has defined her as, he starts to see that she is so much more than this mistake she's made, and he starts to forgive her, and he tries to convince everyone else that they need to give her a second chance. And I love that. I loved his growth. But starting from hating her to forgiving her and also falling in love with her. Their romance was just so sweet. I love how Ledger supported her. And their relationship has an element of heartbreak to it because Ledger does have a connection with Kina's daughter for this specific reason, whereas Kina doesn't know her daughter. So it's really weird for her to be with this guy who has a strong relationship with her daughter, but yet her own mother, which is her, has no relationship with her. It's a really weird dynamic that she also recognizes. I just love this. I, I loved it. I loved it. I loved it. I, <laughs> I want to read it again. After reading this for the first time, I'm like, I want to read this again already. It was just amazing. Uh, one of Colleen Hoover's best and is underrated as of right now. Like, it just came out, but yet not enough people are talking about it, even though it's a really recent release. So please read this book if you haven't yet, especially if you love Colleen Hoover. It is amazing and I gave it five out of five stars. So I started off the month with a great book that I absolutely loved. The next book I read I can't say the same thing for so that's kind of a bummer and that is Every Last Word. This was my random number generated TBR pick book for the month so I'm always hoping to love my TBR book picks but this one just did not do it for me. So this one follows Sam and she has OCD so she has always hid this from her friends. No one besides I think it's her mother knows that she has OCD. So she goes into high school and she becomes part of this group who shares their poetry with one another. So she gets involved with everyone there and starts writing her own poetry and sharing it with the group. She also develops this relationship with this one guy who is in the poetry group and she starts making friends outside of her initial friend group which is really toxic all the while trying to hide the fact that she has OCD and all that. So that's basically what this one is about. It's just about her dealing with her OCD kind of. This one just missed the mark for me and it's so weird to say that because I feel like this book had a lot of elements that I love reading about. I love reading about mental illness. I love reading about different mental illnesses and knowing more about them because I think it's super interesting. I love, you know, really hard-hitting books, which this one kind of set up to be. I love romances. This one had a romance, but yet <laughs> this book did all those elements so wrong. The biggest problem I had with this book is that at the end of the book, Sam is shown to be just cured of her OCD because she fell in love. And that theme just ruined this book for me. I think that theme is so, so, so problematic because love does not cure mental illness. This is actually the book that influenced me to put this specific trope in my least favorite romance tropes video that I did just recently, it's because of this book that I put that trope in there because I remembered, hey, I hate this trope and this book has that trope. I hate it because love cannot cure mental illness. Yes, love can help you cope with your mental illness because you have those, you know, happy feelings that come with being in love, but it does not cure it. And I really, really don't like that this book you know, put that in there, especially because this is a young adult book. I don't want young readers thinking that if they fall in love, their mental illness is going to be cured because it is not. That's not how it works. And overall, I just really hated that at the end of the book, Sam's OCD is just shown to just have gone away. Like it just doesn't exist anymore because I don't feel like that's realistic. Your OCD can't go away within just a handful of months it's always going to be there. You just have to learn to cope with it. I wish this book would have had that message more that yes, although Sam may be, you know, happier because she has friends, good friends, she also has uh, supposedly the love of her life with her now, that even though she has those things, she still has OCD, but she just has to learn to, you know, get through it. But this book doesn't do that. It's like, oh, her OCD is just gone. I hated that. So that was really disappointing. Also, I found that I really didn't like the poetry in this book. I'm not a huge fan of poetry in general, but I feel like the poetry in this book specifically was just so amateur. 
and just you know, not good. It was just very generic. There was nothing, you know, special about it. It just felt like poetry a, you know, first grader would write not high schoolers so I did not like the poetry at all. This book does have a plot twist which I think it was pretty well done. I didn't see it coming. It was pretty shocking um but I also found like the plot twist didn't really make sense and I won't say what it is because spoilers even though I want to recommend this book but the plot twist in context to this book really didn't make sense. I saw some plot holes with it so I had a problem with that as well. So I had a lot of problems with this book. I did give it two out of five stars because I feel like throughout this book I did feel, you know, kind of invested in it because I could see that Sam was growing as a character and so I was invested with that but I feel like the execution of the ending just really fell through and I didn't like it. So two out of five stars. I'm really disappointed in this one especially because I heard pretty good things about it way back when when it first came out but it did not it right with me. And next I reread Ugly Love by Colleen Hoover which I had been wanting to reread for so long. I first read this book in 2015 so it was a real long time ago and I had never reread it before so I went for it and I was pretty nervous to reread this because I read it so long ago and I absolutely loved it the first time I read it so I was hoping that I would still love it you know seven years later and I did. I actually loved it more upon reread. I'm not even kidding. It hit me so much harder upon reread. Ah, this one is just amazing. So Ugly Love follows Tate and Miles. Tate has just moved to San Francisco. I love how this book takes place in San Francisco because that's one of my favorite cities in the entire world. So she moves there. She moves in with her brother and she meets her brother's neighbor who is Miles and becomes very very infatuated with him even though they don't get along really well they kind of butt heads but they are very attracted to each other. However Miles does not want to start a relationship because he doesn't want to fall in love again for a specific reason which I won't mention but he's not open to falling in love again and Tate also doesn't have time for a relationship since she has school and work going on. So because they're both attracted to each other but are not willing to form a relationship what they do instead is agree to just, you know, screw each other and that's it. They're just going to have a friends with benefits relationship and that is it. But as you can probably guess, they do start to grow feelings for each other and that makes their dynamic so much more complicated. So the reason this book hit me so much harder upon reread is because I've kind of gone through a similar relationship between Miles and Tate because often Tate really looks more into her relationship with Miles than there actually is. She'll sometimes believe that he is in love with her when he is, but he rejects her because he doesn't want to, you know, fall in love, but she sees more than is actually there. And I've been in that type of relationship before where I have saw something there that is more than what it actually is and what the other person is willing to give and that's why this book like really really hit me hard because before the first time I read this I hadn't been through that relationship before but as I've grown I have been through something like that and it made me really really connect to this book even more than the first time I read it so that was a very interesting experience and it really made me love this book all the more. I knew what I was getting into while rereading this because I know how it ends and the ending is it's pretty pretty sad. Um, it's pretty tragic and so because I knew what happens at the end it made just reading this book all that more excruciating because I'm like I just know what happens and I know it's coming and it's so heartbreaking. Like I really feel for what Miles has gone through because it's something that I, I couldn't even imagine you know ever going through it like makes me cry <laughs> um, imagining what that must have been like for him and I wouldn't ever want to go through that so I really felt for him uh, through this book like you will really really sympathize with him and I overall love the theme of this book that you know love can be very messy it can lead to heartbreak but it can also be so beautiful and worthwhile it's unfortunate that with falling in love you do open yourself up to so much heartbreak because love is fragile it can fall through and it can break but once you do find you know someone who is willing to stay with you and be that support for you and just love you unconditionally that's when it can be worthwhile and I think a lot of us are hoping to find that someday which you know that's something I'm also hoping for and I often 
do believe because of things that I've seen personally that love can lead to so much heartbreak and that's kind of pulls me back from opening myself up to it but this book just you know further made me believe that it can be something worth having and it can be something beautiful you just gotta find the right person so love how this book brought that theme out I would highly recommend this one it is uh I want to say it really is Colleen Hoover's most steamiest book because of the premise of, you know, these two being in a friends with benefits relationship. So keep that in mind. But other than that, I would really, really recommend it. And upon reread, I still gave it a 5 out of 5 stars. I am so happy to say that I finally got around to reading A Court of Silver Flames, which is the fourth book in the A Court of Thrones and Roses series. I had put this on many a TBR, kept not getting to it because for a while I just was not in the mood to read a fantasy, especially like a chonker fantasy like this one. But I finally got to it and I really, really enjoyed it. And I'm so glad about that because I wasn't the hugest fan of A Court of Wings and Ruin, the third book. So I was very nervous going into this book because the third book kind of let me down. But fortunately, this one was so much better than the third book. The fourth book does not follow Feyre. It follows her sister, Nesta which I was really looking forward to because I really, really enjoyed Nesta as a character in the previous book, so I was excited to follow just her story, and I really, really enjoyed it. What I found super interesting was getting inside Nesta's head and finding out exactly how she felt about Feyre, because Feyre and Nesta have this very volatile relationship. They do not get along very well at all, <laughs> but Nesta actually has a lot of guilt she's carrying over how she has treated Feyre in the past because Feyre used to be the main breadwinner of her family. She had to go out and hunt for food in order to keep them alive and fed and Feyre was the one who did it but Nesta would not do it. She made Feyre go out, she was fine with her going out, and she just did nothing. And so Nesta has a lot of guilt for making Feyre do that all on her own but she also feels really bad for just never doing anything to support her family and just, you know, sitting around not doing anything. She felt like she should have done more, so she feels very, very bad about that. That was super interesting to read because it's easy to write off Nesta as this character who is just, you know, not sympathetic, just very selfish, not caring about anyone or anything, but she actually does hold guilt for just not doing anything to help her family when they were going through a hard time, and I really enjoyed reading about that because it really spoke to how much she has grown as a character. And specifically, her and Feyre have this moment in the book that is so touching. I was legit crying because they have this moment where they just kind of accept each other and forgive each other. And it was so beautiful to see. I loved it so much. And Nesta specifically has a relationship with Cassian, which was foreshadowed in previous books. And I was super looking forward to seeing them and their dynamic together in this book. And it is so good. Oh my god. They have a very, very juicy relationship, which I loved reading about. I really did love how Cassian was such a support for Nesta. And he really helped her grow and come out of her depression. And I just loved how he was there for her. While she was dealing with her guilt and her sorrow, he was so sweet. I feel like Cassian has always been a character that we knew a little about. We knew that he was this strong character who was kind of a jokester sometimes, but we never got to see the deepest parts of him throughout the previous books, but we really get to see him be more emotional and vulnerable in this book, which I really love. And I felt like the plot was actually really engaging. I have a really hard time getting into the plots of fantasy books because they can be kind of hard for me to understand, but I felt like the plot of this one was pretty easy for me to like grasp, so I was really happy about that. Of course, there were still little things where I'm just like, what? What's going on? I don't understand. This is like too fantastical for me, but for the most part, there were some things that I really was able to comprehend. So I gave this one 4 out of 5 stars. I really enjoyed it a lot more than I thought I was going to, so I'm so happy that I did. I think the thing is, is that I really needed to read about something other than Reese and Feyre, because as much as I love them, 
I felt like their chapter had closed. I felt like we were done with them and we needed to move on to something else in this world. So that's why I was really happy that we were going to be following Nesta because I needed to, you know, have a break from Feyre and Reese. So this book gave me that. Next, I read Trust in Me by Jennifer L. Armentrout. And this is book 1.5 in the, uh, is it the Wait for You series? Yes, the first book was Wait for You. So this is the follow-up book to that series. And it is the same plot of Wait For You, but told in the love interest, which is Cam's point of view. I read Wait For You in February and I really, really enjoyed it. As a short summary, it follows this girl named Avery and she runs into this guy named Cam on her first day of college. They get into a relationship, but she has a hard time opening up to him about something that happened in their past and that is kind of the main conflict of the relationship. It's really good. Really, really enjoyed it. So I was kind of hoping to enjoy the follow-up book to it. I did enjoy it, but I did feel like it was unnecessary, and I kind of had a feeling I was going to feel that way before going into this book, because it is basically the first book, but just told in a different point of view, and I don't read a lot of series that have that, where a book in the series is just a previous book in the series, but told in a different point of view, but I still didn't know how I was going to like that, because it's just rereading the same book, just in a different point of view. And that was the case with this book. I did feel like a lot of it was unnecessary because it's just reading the same things that happened in the first book, just in a different point of view, and that didn't make it interesting enough for me. And I actually felt like the story is told better in Avery's point of view. It just makes more sense. Yes, there are some things that Cam is dealing with internally that we do get to see more of why that is in the follow-up book, but I still felt like it was just unnecessary. And I actually got bored with it because I had just read Wait For You. So basically reading it again, like right after just reading the first book, felt kind of boring to me. However, one thing I do like is that the follow-up book, I keep calling it the follow-up book, book 1.5, I don't really know how to describe it because it's not the second book, it's not the sequel, it's just like in between, we'll keep it at that, the follow-up book, you know what I mean. I do like how the follow-up book did set up what was going to happen in the second book because Cam's sister is mentioned a lot in the follow-up book and her story is the main premise of the second book so I can see where it was setting up for her story and I found that very, very, very interesting. Um, and there's a lot of juicy things going on with her that were being set up in the follow-up book, so I really like that. But other than that, I just felt like this one was unnecessary. Uh, I would say if you were to read this series, just, you know, skip book 1.5. I don't feel like it's necessary to read it. And I gave it 3 out of 5 stars. The last book I read was not on my TBR for April, but I picked it up because I found out there was going to be a movie adaptation for it. And a celebrity was really amping it up. I'll get into that in a minute, but that's the reason why I decided to read it. And that is Where the Crawdads Sing by Delia Owens. So this one is becoming a movie, and I specifically picked this one up because Taylor Swift wrote an original song for the movie based off of this book, and I had seen her post about it, you know, her saying, like, I'm, I'm writing a song for this book, I really enjoy this book, that's something she also said, so I wrote a song for it, and because Taylor Swift loved this book, that's what motivated me to read it, because I love Taylor Swift, as I have mentioned so many times before, so she actually influenced me to read this book, so that's pretty cool, and I do believe I've heard about this book before, I'm sure I've heard other booktubers talking about it, but it had never been on my TBR list or anything. But based on Taylor's recommendation, I picked it up, and I love this so much. Oh my god, I loved it more than I thought I was going to. So this book follows this girl named Kaya, and we watch her grow up. From a child to adulthood, we follow her journey just growing up. And she lives on this marsh in North Carolina. Eventually, she ends up living there all on her own, even as a child, because her family has abandoned her. Lots of people have abandoned her. She's just surviving all on her own. And she is seen as someone very inferior to the rest of the people in this town. Because she lives on a marsh, they just see her as, you know, dirty and weird and all that. So no one in town really gets along with her. She does, however, have a relationship with this boy who she's known since she was a child. And they have a very sweet love story that I love. She also gets involved with this other guy. And that's where the mystery comes in. Because another part of this book is this mystery where this guy in the town 
was killed in a very, very weird fashion that is super suspicious. And that's what this one is all about. So it is a romance. It is a mystery. has a lot of things going on with it. Also, it does take place from 1952 to 1970. So this is also counts as a historical fiction, which is pretty cool. I really, really loved Kaya as a character. It was so sad reading about her story because so many people in her life have abandoned her, which includes her family, also personal relationships that she has built. Everyone just abandons her and she really feels sorrowful because of that because she doesn't want to be alone. She wants to be able to have relationships but it's really hard when everyone leaves her and the whole town sees her as this dirty girl who no one should be around because she lives on the marsh and is just like this weird girl. So she feels very, very sad about that. She just wants to have relationships but she feels like she can't. and. You know, as someone like me who also has a hard time just building relationships, I really felt for her loneliness because I've also been in positions where I've also felt such loneliness. I love being by myself. I am a huge fan of just being by myself in my own home, either reading a book or, you know, making videos like this or writing. I just love doing my own thing, being alone. But oftentimes, yeah, I do want to be around other people and I want to be able to build relationships. And for that reason, I really, really connected with Kaya on that because she also feels such deep loneliness and it was really really hard to read about but it's also so very relatable. This book is also so atmospheric. I love how it took place on this marsh. There's a lot of vivid descriptions of the land and the creatures that surround the land and all the nature that is so vivid you really felt like you were in this marsh in this atmosphere because it was so detailed in the way it was written which was really cool and the mystery unfolded so well I love how there's two separate timelines taking place there will be some chapters where we follow Kaya and you know what she's going through and then in the next chapter we'll skip to the case that happened with this guy and his death and we see the cops kind of trying to piece together what happened and all these clues are being brought up as evidence to what could have happened to him. It's really, really cool and interesting. I cannot wait for the movie. I feel like the movie is going to be done so well. The trailer looks so good. I absolutely cannot wait for it. And I cannot wait to hear Taylor's song, Carolina, that she wrote for this book. And hopefully it's coming out soon because I need to hear it. I'm always on board for a new Taylor Swift song. I gave this 5 out of 5 stars. I would highly recommend it if you haven't picked it up yet. And those were all the books that I read in March. Let me know if you've read any of these books and what you thought of them. I would love to know. And I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe for more anime-related videos and book-related videos. If you'd like to follow me on social media, those links will be in the description box, and I will be back really soon. Bye!